This is a 15-year-old Nissan Altima. And by the way, you can tell this is a 2006 because it still has a CD player. Which car has a CD player anymore? You can't find this. If you have CDs, this is your car. You could play your old CDs in this car. And as far as driving performance, uh, it accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour in 8.1 seconds and 0 to 100 kilometers an hour in about 8.5 seconds. Not bad at all for a four-cylinder engine. Well, like I said, it's got that little CVTC working for itself there, giving it extra power when it gets to about 4,500 RPM. So anyway, that has been my 15-year review of this car. And uh, stay tuned because pretty soon I will be reviewing a much newer car, so keep an eye out for it. This is a brand new 2019 Volkswagen Golf Alltrack off-road station wagon. Now you might wonder, how could it be brand new when it's 2021 and the car is 2019? And here's why. This car was rescued from the dealership basement where it has been sitting for the last two years. Now you might ask, why would such a great car be sitting in the basement and why would nobody want to buy it? Well, we're going to get to that later. For now, we're going to focus on this car. As I've said, this is VW's off-road station wagon, which is different from VW's regular station wagon called the Golf Sport Wagon. Now this has VW's signature 4-motion all-wheel drive, which can also be found in the VW Atlas and VW Tiguan. Now this one, again, is an all-track and it's uh, one of the things that separates it from the Golf Sport Wagon is, apart from the all-wheel drive, is you got the body cladding all around the vehicle and it is also slightly lifted above the ground compared to the Sport Wagon. This car happens to be the top trim. There are three trims of this car. You got the comfort line, which is the bottom trim. You got the high line, which is the middle trim. And you got this, the exec line. It's got every single creature comfort that they could put in an all track. Mm, gotta love that new car smell. Now just ignore that cowboy hat that's sitting on the headrest and point your eyes towards the panoramic sunroof right above it. Now this is one of my favorite features of this car. It's, uh, you know, it stretches from the back seats all the way to the front on top of the driver and passenger seat. One of the things I can't wait to do with this car is drive it on the Trans Canada Highway next to the Canadian Rockies because I can just imagine looking through the glass panoramic sunroof and I can see the mountains just right there, the mountain peaks. I mean, it's, it's going to be a treat for the passengers if I were to do that. Now, in the back seat right here, you got your AC. Unfortunately, this is the one thing I don't like about this car, is it doesn't have USB charging in the back. Why would they not do that? Everybody has cell phones, even back in 2019. And here we are looking at the back cargo area. As you can see, I'm already using it to pick up groceries. But here's one thing. You might want to Google this if you don't believe me, but this car has more cargo space than Mercedes-Benz's biggest station wagon, which is the E-Class. You got the E63, or you know, the, the e, E450, or the E603 AMG. All of them, they're all the same. Now, I'm not comparing this entire vehicle with Mercedes-Benz's station wagons, but what I'm saying is, if you're looking for a station wagon and you also want space, this car has more cargo space than Mercedes-Benz's largest station wagon. That's all I'm saying cargo space. Now, one of the features that the exec line trim has are these LED adaptive headlights. Now, right now they're off because they're set on auto and it's too bright. But when you're driving at night and you're turning around the corners, the headlights will turn so you can see around the dark corners. So that is a great feature. It is a great safety feature and I like that. Now, just a slight demonstration of the panoramic sunroof. Now, you, you can open it like this. It's, this is really handy when it's really hot and you have to get back in the car after being parked outside under the sun all day. 
it just opens this and it just releases all the heat while you have the AC bringing in cool air you're pushing out the hot air through the open sunroof or if you just want air when you're driving you know and, and then of course you, you close it this way but if it gets too hot then you got this This is a feature that I've been wanting to try since I picked up the car from the dealership last week. We're just gonna let the car park itself right here, so let's just watch. Here's the infotainment system, and I don't know much about it yet. There's uh, quite a few selections here on this menu, and you know, since we just got the car last week, I still don't know how to work all these features, so we're gonna find out as we go. We're gonna be taking this car camping probably next week, and we're gonna find out more when I do my drive. But here is Android Auto, or you have Apple CarPlay if you use an iPhone. You can use your maps, you can use your ways, or the vehicle also has its own navigational system if you if you don't want to use data from your from your cellular phone. Now we're just gonna be playing around with the menu items here. I don't know what they do, like I said, so uh, I'm gonna learn them as we go. The more miles we put on this vehicle, the more I learn. Oh, here's the mode button for different driving modes. And uh, oh, there's the echo mode for fuel economy, if you want to say fuel as you drive. And there's the normal, just regular driving, you know, just regular in the city. And you got the sport for more aggressive driving. You got custom if you want to customize your settings. And off-road if, eh, if you want to go off-road, of course. Now, uh, let's check this one. Oh, here's the off-road information. You could, uh, let's see what it tells you. Oh, 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 wait a minute. Where did I go? I got to get out of this menu. I don't know what to do with this yet. Uh, oh, here we go. All right. Oh, it looks like you got the angle of your wheel. You got your elevation or our current elevation of 704 meters got your compass right there and your oil temperature your coolant temperature yeah so you're, let's say you're driving the mountains you're doing some off-roading uh, certain times you want to know where your tires are pointed so that's why you have uh, where was that where did I see that one there so you want to know which angle your tires are when you're turning the wheel right because you don't want to fall off the cliff you want to make sure your tires are pointed in the proper direction right and there's also a risk of heating up your oil in your engine so you want to know your oil and coolant temperature and uh, your elevation of course and how high you how high you are up in the mountains it's uh, it's, it's pretty cool there's a lot of information here Now let's check out these buttons on the steering wheel. Looks like these are cruise control buttons. You got to, to set it and to resume your speed, to turn it on and off, and uh, what does this do? What is this symbol right here? Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, wait, where'd it go? There. So lane assist, blind spots. So it looks like these are all safety features when you're driving. Uh, looks like these are uh, collision avoidance systems. And uh, what is this? Oh, wait a minute. I think I know what this is. This is your adaptive cruise control, which means the car maintains a certain distance between you and the car in front. And this button right here enables you to select the following distance. So if you want to follow the car in front of you much closer or you want to be further away. Uh, yeah, these are volume controls for your uh, infotainment system. And it uh, looks like these are just a bunch of menu selection buttons. Oh yeah, so navigation, oh, there's a bunch of things here I still need to find out how to use. Uh, yeah, there we go. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to use them. I gotta, I gotta drive this car more. And uh, I would assume these buttons are for selecting your tracks when you're playing music. Or stations, if you're listening to radio. But who listens to radio anymore? Oh, there's the voice controls here if you want to talk to your car and make, make a phone call. So let's try that when we get back in the garage. But uh, this is a park pilot right here. 
Uh, I still have to figure out what that does. And the one on top is for your parking assist, which we just demonstrated earlier. That I know what to do with. Alright, uh, let's go back in the garage and test out that voice command. Now we're back inside the garage, and I turned off the lights in the garage so we can see the display better. Now let's try to make a phone call here. Call Claudine Cell. Do you want to call Claudine Cell? Yes. Calling contact. Alright, I think we need to hang up now. We don't need her to answer the phone. We just want to know that it works. And uh, it, it looks like it works. It's dialing right now. So, okay, there you go. Hang up, hang up. Well, I think that's it for now. I think we have explored just about everything we can explore at this point. But before I end this, uh, you might want to stick around if you, you know, for a few seconds at least if you want to know why this 2019 vehicle ends up being brand new in 2021. And here's the story. Now, we are in Canada, which is part of the North American market. And in, in the North American market, everybody wants SUVs. So anybody that's looking for an all-wheel drive utility vehicle, they jump right away onto buying SUVs. Sometimes not knowing that station wagons have more room than certain crossover SUVs. Huh? Also, in North America, there is this impression about station wagons. Now, if you look at the car on top, that is what people think when they think about station wagons, because those were the station wagons back in the 80s and back in the 70s. Uh, you know, cars that were driven by old people that were covered in wood panels. But these days, the one below, that is the modern station wagon. And more often than not, these modern station wagons are driven by active outdoorsy people who take their mountain bikes to the mountains or people who ski or snowboard because hey you have a lot of space you can put all your gear in the back and you got all-wheel drive at least in the case of the all-track right you know all-wheel drive and you got the space and you can do outdoorsy stuff you can do camping you can do fishing you can do kayaking that is what the modern station wagon does and it is no longer for old people and it's no longer covered in wood paneling so to get back to my story these cars never sold here in Canada and in the US. Well, VW sold a few of them, but not enough. So there's a few of them that were sitting in the basement for two years. Nobody would buy them because everybody wants SUVs. And well, here I come. I've always wanted an all, you know, an all track. Like ever since this model came out first in 2017 for the North American market, I've always wanted one. And I thought I'd never see one. It's, it's so rare. It's so hard to find. So I, I, I thought, well, yeah, screw it. I'm never, never gonna find one. But this car comes along, and it's in the basement collecting dust for two years. Well, what do you do? You gotta buy it. I, I mean, this car is rare, and it's, it, they, they've stopped selling it in North America because they're not selling enough of it. Like I said, SUVs, right? But in Europe. These cars are everywhere. You got BMW, you got VW, you got Mercedes, you got Volvo, you got Audi. They are everywhere in Europe. But not in North America where they are rare. And that is one of the reasons I've always wanted one. Plus, it's it's more fun to drive because you're closer to the ground, the car is more agile, and it's just it's I don't know, it's hard, it's hard to explain. You, you just gotta just just to compare driving an SUV to a station wagon like this. It's uh it's just more enjoyable to drive. And one last thing. I think wagons are sexier than SUVs. I mean, look at that shape. It's sleeker and it's it's low to the ground and it's it's long. And it's yeah, it's just better to look at as far as I'm concerned. So, yeah, that's the um, that's the story. Coming up next, we take this car out camping next week. So, stay tuned and keep an eye out for our camping video which will be coming out very soon.